everybody, this is Lisa. And this is Joe. And welcome to your cheap date for October 21st, 2006. That's Cheap Date, the show that asks the question. Uh, what kind of a nut is a beer nut? We've actually asked that question on the show before, as you recall. I've actually asked that question in earnest before. Well, looking at this bag of Beer Nuts brand snacks, Beer Nuts is a registered trademark of Beer Nuts Incorporated, Bloomington, Illinois. Since 1953, when Russell Shirk first prepared Redskin Peanuts by hand in his Caramel Crisp Shop, Beer Nuts products have been synonymous with premium quality and made-to-order freshness. They're peanuts with vegetable oil, corn syrup, and salt. So are beer nuts always nuts, or do they come in like walnut variety? Or I mean, did I say peanuts? Yeah. Are they always peanuts, or do they also come in like other nuts? Cashews. Nu- cashew. Yeah, can you buy like cashews? I believe they're beer nut brand cashews. That's what I was asking. What we have before of, before us are classic peanuts. Courtesy of Matt from the Red Boy Podcast. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Oh, they're made right there in Bloomington. That's right. So this is part of our food exchange. Bloomington, Illinois. Bloomington, Illinois. And look, the date on the peanuts is... Did you say Illinois? Illinois. (laughs) Oh, Joe. And the date on the bag is February 27th, 2007. Hometown proud Bloomington, Illinois. Matt said he bought these at the factory. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. So before we started doing the show... He is hometown proud. (laughs) So before we started doing the show, we cracked into the beer nuts and they're very good they're actually and they're actually not too bad for you there's a lot of fat 14 grams of fat in a serving oh now don't be that guy but low on the carbs they taste delightfully like peanut butter they're Mm -hmm. sweet they're just a tiny bit sweet and um and salty but not like i don't know the sweetness and the saltiness are a nice balance Mm -hmm. they don't dry you out like some salty things do right and they're delicious. And in order to keep our whistles wet. <laughs> we have these tiny little seven ounce beer mugs. Yeah, the beer glasses we got from our favorite Irish pub. They're running a special one night on seven ounce pints. <laughs> yeah, only three dollars. You get to keep the glass, though. Yeah. So, yeah, they're cool. They're, you know what they are? They're shaped like little, well, they're supposed to be little, they say Guinness, Harp, and Smithwicks. Mm-hmm. The Brewers of Guinness are three beers strong, and they're little seven ounces, and actually we split a, well, we're going to get thrown into beer jail because we put a Bex in here. Oh, well. German beer in an Irish cup. They're shaped kind of like a little Coca-Cola. That sounds like a really dirty joke. (laughs) That's right. They're shaped like Coke glasses. Little Coca-Cola glasses. So look at the blog. You'll see a picture of them. They're very cute. And we were teasing Derek, the guy who owns this place, saying, yeah, only you could come up with the idea of a seven ounce pint. Mm -hmm. Very good. (laughs) See, we'll put it in a little glass so it'll look like it's full. That's all right. Okay, so the beer nuts came from Matt, and we we met Matt because... Wow, how lucky are we? We walked into Navy Pier one day, and there were Charlie and Carol. From Israelisms. And we stood there talking to them, and then in walked Matt and Amy. And their kids. And their kids. Holy smokes. It's almost as if it was a planned rendezvous of podcasters. It wasn't an official meetup, so before you go getting your panties in a bind about not being (laughs) invited, it was just a very casual thing. Carol and Charlie were in town. Yes, they've been staying in Chicago for the past couple of weeks. And they they saw it go from 70 degrees down to 30 degrees Mm -hmm. in that space of time. They got the snow and everything. And um, Matt and Amy came in, and their kids came in for the day, Mm -hmm. right? And uh, so, yeah, we all met up at Navy Pier. And had lunch at Joe's Bebop Cafe. That's right. Which is, I don't know, appropriately touristy, I guess. It was good, and they they did pretty well with our big crowd. Yeah, we had a bit. We did have a big crowd, a couple of kids, because my kids were with us. Right, your and kids aren't like little. They're not kids, little kids, but, but they were they were having a blast with Matt and Amy's kids. Oh though. my gosh! <clears throat> All of a sudden, now they want a little brother and sister exactly like Matt and Amy's <laughs> kids. And Matt and Amy want babysitters like <laughs> Becky and Emma. <laughs> like teenage girls. 
So maybe we can work something out. It's too bad they're a couple yeah, hundred miles away from us. Yeah, some so. sort of swap. <laughs> so anyway, it was a very nice meet up with them. I don't think... Oh. Speak of the devils. Speak of the devils. Hello. Hey, what's up? <laughs> All right, well, call me later. All right, I love you. Okay, bye. Okay, that would be Becky, my daughter. Yay, Becky. On our way home from school. So, before the interruption, let's talk about Joe's Bebop. Or is there much <laughs> more to say about it? There's not much to say about it. I mean, it's right next to Bubblegum Shrimp Company, which is exactly what it sounds like. I, I've never been to Bubba Gump, but, you know, mm-hmm. it's very touristy, and so was Joe's Bebop, but it was good. It was good. It was. It's perfect for that location. But far more important than the food that day was the company. Yes. We had a delightful time with the we, delightful Ch- Charlie and Carol and the delightful Matt and Amy. We really did. Mm-hmm. And it was a beautiful day. Yes, it was perfect. So Cool, but beautiful. Mm-hmm. So after we enjoyed our food at Joe's Bebop, we got in our car. We managed to find a spot, parking spot, on the street. Now, <laughs> for those so of you who live in Chicago, it. you know what a fine that is. We found a spot on the street, had a meter, shoved a bunch of quarters in it, and we were cool. So then after we got back to the car, it was zipping up north to... Fright Fest. That's right. It's at our local Six Flags Park. Six Flags Great America, although I think they just call it Six Flags now. I just call it Six Flags. I don't call it Great America. I remember when it was well, Marriott's Great America, but that's no sense bringing the Civil War into this. Oh, that was a couple <laughs> episodes ago. Never mind. The thing is, usually if you're talking about a Six Flags, you're talking about the nearest one. Correct. I'm not talking about Six Flags in Ohio. Right. So... What do we want to talk about Fright Fest? The idea, it's brilliant marketing on behalf of the, on the part of the people who run this It place. really is. Instead of closing the, the theme park, and this is a theme park. Is it a theme park or an amusement park? Theme park. It's a theme park and water park. Well, the water park part was closed, of course. But complete with amazing rides. I mean, this is no Indiana Beach. This is a full-on Six Flags experience. Oh, yeah. But instead of closing it at Labor Day... When the kids go back to school, they keep it open weekends in October, only they retool it as Fright Fest. Mm-hmm. Now, this retooling is not complicated. A couple of the rides, they kind of rebrand, like they changed the Viper to they changed Viper to Snakes on a Train. <laughs> oh, did they? Yeah. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> they 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 add some scary stuff to the demon. The Raging Bull was called the. Uh, no, it wasn't the Raging they... Bull. There was another one they changed the name of it. Yeah, there were a couple things that were normally just good time rides that they added some sort of scary twist to. Yeah, the demon they just had dressed up. They put they had like smoke machines going around. The side yeah, a no. demon. And then they have some haunted houses, mm-hmm. which... Uh, we well, did not go through. We're a bunch of chickens. <laughs> it was surprisingly packed. I mean, it was a beautiful day, like Lisa said, but it was totally packed. But by the time we left at 10, well, so anyway, when you wouldn't normally think of going to a, uh, an amusement park or a theme park in October, they give it this Halloween spin. Right. And so it seems perfectly appropriate. Um, it was a lot of fun. So we went The on only the thing was, it was like it was like 38 degrees by the time we left yeah, at 10 Yeah, it got o'clock. cold. But that, when the sun went down, it got cold. Yes. We waited in line. There's a ride called Batman, which is a really cool ride because it's a roller coaster. You sit four across, and mm-hmm. you sit in chairs, and the rail for the roller coaster is above your head. Mm-hmm. So there are four of you, and it's 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 like you're flying. It's like you're sitting, but you're flying. I think about like half of roller coasters are like that now. Really? Where the rail is overhead? Mm-hmm. Where you actually, your feet are dangling? Mm-hmm. So when you get thrown around and you're doing like 360 and your feet are in the air because of with the force that you're going through. Oh, mm-hmm. man. Yeah. And 
um, the Demon, which has always been my favorite one because it's just it's just way fast. It's a it's a very classic roller coaster, but it's good. Yeah, very fast, very very smooth and glidey. Mm-hmm. And then my daughter Emma, her favorite ride at Great at Great America is the Giant Drop. How high is the Giant Drop? Two hundred feet. Two hundred feet. Twenty stories. Twenty stories. You're on, there's a pole. Imagine. Imagine a pole <laughs> with chairs around the out with the backs of the chairs to the pole side. Mm-hmm. You sit in this chair, you get strapped up. Again, I think there are four of you in a row, or three of you. I think it no is. Four. four, four. Oh, that's right, because one chair was busted on ours. Mm-hmm. They haul you up this twenty-story high tower. Once again, you're back to the tower. And again, your feet are dangling. And your feet are dangling. Because I remember seeing you guys, everybody kicking on the way up Uh, (laughs) frantically. So you're going up and you can't, your peripheral vision will only carry you as far as the people sitting next to you. You can't see behind you and the chair is so high and you're you're buckled in so you can't turn around and see what's Mm -hmm. behind you. So you have no way of, you know, keeping your perspective that says, okay, I'm going up, but there's a pole behind me and we're safe and it's all cool. It's you all can't good. really look down either, can you? And you can't look down either. So all you can do is look out. <laughs> so you're going up and you're thinking, okay, this is kind of cool because you're like, okay, this is cool. This is high. And then all of a sudden you hit that point where it's like. That's about halfway up. And you're higher than a human being really should be. <laughs> uh-huh. Unencumbered by or, or not enclosed in some sort of vehicle. <laughs> Be it an mm-hmm. airplane or something. Yes. <laughs> or inside the safety of a restaurant or something like that. So we're so we're up there. And it was dark by this point. And it was, as Lisa said, it was cold because it was probably, it was like about 930 at night by the time Emma and I got up there. Yes. And the ride up takes how long? About 25 seconds. 25 seconds to the top. And then what they do is the guy who operates it messes with your head because you get up to the top and he makes you sit there. For about 10 seconds. For about 10 seconds. And you're looking around and you're like, okay. And you know what's going to happen. Uh-huh. You just don't know exactly when. And then you hear this, excuse me, you hear this giant clank clink, from whatever the mechanism that hauled you up is now released and you let gravity pull you all the way down to the earth. And you land with a very soft... Yeah, there's brakes that are applied in the last probably 25 feet. I almost think it's something hydraulic coming from... Up because it's be. almost like you land on an air like a cushion. shock absorber or something like that. Extreme, <laughs> extremely soft landing. I'll say that about it. But I will but say you'll note that I'm talking about it in the past tense. <laughs> yeah, further that, past tense. Notice that Lisa is, is talking about viewing it from the ground. <laughs> I did it once and I did not care to do it again. Uh, but it was it was a lot of fun, and I will say that. This is the first time I've been to an amusement park since I've had my LASIK surgery last year. Oh, yeah. So when I was up there, I was looking around and I could see freaking everything. Pal, just you <laughs> wait. Now, we were doing roller coasters in the dark, which was a great experience. It was a lot of fun. Uh-huh. But just you wait until you do a roller coaster in full daylight. Mm-hmm. I think you will be a lot more scared than you were with your blurry vision. Yes. Because you couldn't even see... You you could see what the car right in front of you, right? I mean, much. you couldn't see anything, right? Who? Oh. Just you wait. <laughs> so we had a very full day. Yeah, Saturday was a big day, and then we got to experience um, the McDonald's at the Lake Forest <laughs> Oasis on the way home. Sort of anticlimactic. <laughs> the worst cheap date of all. <laughs> well, it was. It was ridiculous to eat in the park, and all of the line. We underestimated all of the lines. Mm. They all took longer than they should have, really. So, yeah. What we're we gonna do? Joe, party of two. Your table is ready. Alrighty. So where are we this time? McDonald's? No. Burger King? No. And we're not at a place that's really, really, really expensive. We're at a legitimate cheap date restaurant where you go in and you sit down oh, and you are like- served some awesome food. That's kind of cheap. It's kind of cheap. It, this is like this is like retro cheap date. <coughs> Classic cheap. Date. Classic cheap date. We are at El Molino in Carpentersville. We today. can never again make fun of a TV show for getting away from its roots. That's true. That's right. Brady Bunch when Cousin Oliver came in. Nope, can't do it. That was like that was like us going to uh, McDonald's. <laughs> 
That's right. Okay. So, Joe's been talking about this place, El Molino, in Carpentersville, for, I don't know, two years? Mm-hmm. And we finally made it out there. We did. Okay, so, I had the namesake, or one of the namesakes, Enchiladas El Molino, which were, of course, enchiladas covered with special El Molino sauce, melted chihuahua cheese, and sour cream. Chihuahua. Delicious. I remember the first time one of the kids saw Chihuahua on a menu. There's dog in it. <laughs> no. I had my very favorite thing of all time. And it's right next to and, the thing I had. Right. And it's probably, I, I dare say that this is probably my absolute favorite dish I have ever had in a Mexican restaurant. Whoa. And that's, is that it says like a lot. Is it like the best thing you've ever eaten? Because since we started doing, well, that's your line. Since we started doing Cheap Date, we've gone to what, like eight Mexican restaurants oh, geez, or something yeah. like that? Because Mexican food is generally cheap, especially around here. And tasty. I had the enchiladas huastuqueñas. Now, which, how are those different from the enchiladas El Molino? Well, here's the story. It's primarily, you had the special El Molino sauce uh-huh. and cheese. I had a special, it was a chipotle sauce. Oh. And this stuff was, this was hot and it was spicy. It was hot, but it wasn't hot. It wasn't inedibly hot. Mm-hmm. It was really, really hot. As long as you had the sour cream on the side, you could take a little dollop and cool it off. But mm-hmm. oh, what it was, there were two enchiladas or three enchiladas, chicken. You can get them with your choice of meat. These were chicken, um, and they were covered with this sauce. It's a very dark brown, almost like a mole sauce. Sorry, mole. mole sorry. We're better now. <sighs> um, don't, don't roll your eyes at our <laughs> listeners. <laughs> No, I know, I know, I know. Okay, moving anyway, on. So the huastuquina, it, it's um, so the stuff is poured over it. Then there's cheese and it's melted. It's oh man, it's dark and rich and very smoky. It doesn't have any sweetness like a mole, like a mole. It has a yeah. It was chipotle, so it was like a smoky type of pepper mm-hmm. type of sauce. But it was rich and thick and oh, absolutely delicious. But probably the spiciest thing I've ever had in a Mexican restaurant. I yes. mean, and spicy in a complex way, not just spicy to, you know, show off. Right. Very good. I you like you know what I'm talking about. I know about. exactly what you're talking about. So those were the dinner. We we have dinner. We did not go for drinks. We didn't go for. We were thinking about. We we're toying with the idea of sangria. Then we were toying with the idea of. They're various margaritas, and they have a fairly extensive tequila We're list here as well. Toying with those ideas, but we decided that we weren't going to do that. We were just going to let the food speak for itself, and speak it did. Yes, it did. It, it was, was absolutely wonderful. delicious. So that is El Molino. If you're in the area, the service for it was very good. The oh, yes, atmosphere was up. good. It was a Sunday night, so it was a little bit quiet. And there was some dining club that was there. Some guy had a T-shirt with a website address on it that was like local diners. Oh, should we whatever. get cheap date t-shirts to wear on our dates? Perhaps we should. Cheap date bibs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind. Uh, and from a cost standpoint for the two of us, it was under 25 bucks. Good. It was it was absolutely delicious and we did not leave hungry. Oh, um Carpentersville is one of the further northwest suburbs of Chicago. It's a little bit north, a little bit west of Hoffman Estates and Schaumburg and that whole area. Straight north of Elgin, straight east of Algonquin. Actually, Carpentersville is currently trying to pass a law regarding um, illegal immigrants. Really? Uh huh. Basically, to get them out of there, and and to make um, English their official language. Really? Wow. Yeah. It's quite a it's quite a deal. Yeah, I was not aware and, of that. And um, personally, I think that's a bad bad idea. But we won't get political. <laughs> I I think the more variety of people we have here in the United States, the better. So we did get a little political. So there you have it. Just a little. <laughs> El Molino is a twenty one twelve. Ooh, excellent twenty one twelve. Just like the Rush album. Twenty one twelve oh. Elgin Road, which is Route twenty five. In Carpentersville, Illinois. All 
Alrighty, we're back. I don't think they knew we were gone. Oh, well, we were just sort of sitting by while the music was playing. Oh. Dancing around to mariachi music. Dancing merrily. (laughs) We are awesome dancers, by the way. We are. Let it be known. Never let it be... (laughs) We had some feedback that I wanted to share with the rest of the world. I'm sure you wanted to share it as well. Of course. The first was a voicemail that came from a guy who identified himself as Hot Sauce Lover from Austin, Texas. He talked about um, Amy's Ice Cream, which we mentioned on our... Uh-huh. The ice cream show after, or the show after the ice cream show, Shelly from Shelly's podcast had emailed right. us and told us all about it. Shelly and Hot Sauce Lover are neighbors. Are they? They're both from Austin. Oh, okay. Well, I thought, I thought maybe you knew something that I didn't. <laughs> That's cool. And then he also mentioned a place called Angie's Restaurant, which is at 7th and I-35. They have exceptional hot sauce, and he said make sure that you keep a glass of milk or something nearby. Water, probably. For the heat. Um, and he referred to, uh, yeah, he referred to the, the service as wonderful. He says it's just a great place. So another place for us to try when we're down in Austin. Quite a Mexican restaurant from what he says. Yes. And he, right, what he said is they'll bring you the chips and salsa first and you'll be tempted to dig in, but wait until you have a glass of water. Right. And boy, have I been that guy <laughs> at the Mexican <laughs> restaurant. Mmm, chips and salsa. Ah, ah. I want it, want it. Glug, 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 glug. Uh-huh. You're like Homer Simpson under the squishy machine. <laughs> Mr. Simpson. I am not anything like Homer Simpson. You take that back. <laughs> okay, I'm the one who's more like Homer Simpson. <laughs> You're Lisa Simpson. That's right. In more right. ways than one. I'm a vegetarian. That's right. And I think that's a very apt description of you. Apt. <laughs> Thank you, hot sauce lover. Yes. And we also have a guest review from Daryl from the Pod Dog Show. Excellent. So this is uh, Daryl and uh, Marianne from Turbo Blender. And also a special guest <sighs> appears on this little clip that we're going to play for you right now. Hey, Joe and Lisa. It's Daryl Cognito from the Pod Dog Show and Marianne from Turbo Blender. And we're just kind of finishing up some expo festivities actually not quite finishing up i've i've got a few parties to go to still tonight but we're at a place called the called the yard yard house now you may not be able to use the audio because of the ambient music in the background uh but hey the fcc is not listening now i was going to do a full meal review but you know what the expo has literally worn us out but i thought i'd tell you a little bit about the beer uh they've got roughly 472,000 beers on tap in this yard house and amazing. So I ordered the Lost Coast Amber Wheat and it's it's got a really nice color to it, uh, a little murky, but the flavor is is wonderful. The, the apricot is very, very subtle. Oh, and it, it's just a very refreshing refreshing beer after spending you know 12 hours hanging out with podcasters so now i'm going to pass the mic over to to marianne and she's going to tell us what beer she's drinking are you inferring that i'm a cheap date (laughs) um i'm drinking a german beer and it's my pardon my german erdinger heftraub weiss and it's a wheat beer i have a big wedge of lemon floating around in it and it is absolutely one of the very best wheat beers I've ever tasted. Excellent. And I've tasted quite a few. Excellent. So, one more time for the cheap date. We, we've just ordered a couple more beers. Now, Marianne, what did you order? I forget. No, okay. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I do remember. Um, this is a Portland something honey. I wish you'd left our menus. Yeah. Portland honey beer. Okay, now I tried that beer and compared it to the one you had before and it's very good. But it is a cleaner beer. You can see through it. And to me, it has a very uh, mid-afternoon, summertime feel to it. Right. Where, whereas your, your wheat ale had more of an evening feel to this it. This is the kind of beer that you would have after you mowed the lawn. Yes. And yeah. before you've really started your drinking for the day. Yes. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pre-drinking beer. Non-filling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 
Now, I ordered something called the Arrogant Bastard. Now, just in case you need this, Joe, uh, the Arrogant Beep. <laughs> and unfortunately, it is a very dark, dark, dark beer, which is really delicious, but does not fit the climate or the food I've ordered. So that does, does kind of suck, but... You have to... Oh, I mean, really, can Daryl Cognito not order something called the Arrogant Bastard? I mean, think about it. And I'm the chief. Oh, the there she is. <laughs> and and here, here you go, Lisa and Joel. How about a bit of an exclusive? Um, she's only ever appeared on one or two other shows. The Better Point Five from the Pod Dog Show. Why don't you tell us what you're drinking? I'm drinking a big old vat of water. And now that's a cheap date. Listen, guys, love the show. Talk to you soon. Okay, so thank you, Daryl and Marianne and the Better Point Five. <laughs> Rarely heard in the potosphere. Yes. Oh, God, I hate that word. <gasps> Joseph! I, I'm seriously, can I just go on record as saying, I never liked blogosphere when people were using that. Oh. And then, then it, now it's potosphere. Potosphere, it makes it sound like, like it's outer space and we're all in these little you know what <laughs> you get your butt out to the information super highway <laughs> yeah i got your on ramp to the super highway <gasps> right here pal right here pal the information super highway so anyway so that's uh so that's a story that's that what else do we have oh we have one other piece of information to share with people now don't we yes we do our next show which will be released next Saturday, a week from today, or <laughs> whenever you're listening to this. The right. Saturday about, to, you know what I'm talking about. I don't need to get into. <laughs> we'll put it in the show notes. We'll clear it all up for you. <laughs> that will mark the end of our very first year of podcasting. Yay. Yay. And to treat ourselves for a job well done for one year. We are going to be taking a brief hiatus. Right. To regenerate, to recuperate. I was telling um, Charlie and Carol last weekend that every time we go to a restaurant, it's, is this cheap date material? Yeah. <laughs> so we need to just be able to go out like normal people for a while. We go to the same restaurant the second time. Not. Th <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. We love a restaurant and we can't go back because... Here, let's review Pepe's Tacos again. <laughs> again. So we have a lot going on with the wedding and the holidays coming up. Right. And I'm still in class and everything else. So um, so we're going to take the rest of the year off. Our next regularly scheduled show. Well, next week's show will be our next regularly scheduled show. So yeah, so don't, don't go panic. Away, don't go away. We got one, you got one more show out of us before we go. Um, so we're going to be doing next week's show. And then we're going to be off. Our next regularly scheduled show after that will be on January 7th, which is right after the new year. And we're not we'll going to do a January 1st show. Well, here's the thing, and I want to make, um, I haven't discussed this with you, so we're going to do it oh, on the wow. show. Conflict resolution well, we live on the air. <laughs> <laughs> we could make this a win, win, win situation. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, um, our next regularly scheduled show will be January 7th, but we reserve the right to throw something else out there on the feed in between now and then. Because I had some ideas for some things that the kids might want to do. And the holidays always brings up various food things. So mm -hmm. the advice that we have for you listeners is do not remove us from your podcast or your iTunes. Nothing's going to be going away. Nothing's going to be changing. We're just not right. going to be doing any new shows until January. But we reserve the right to throw various things out there between now and January. Right. It's just not going to be a regularly scheduled, fun-filled, standard format, mm -hmm. cheap date show like you've all come to know and love. So stay tuned. I understand some of our listeners are, are behind a few shows and need to catch up. Right. So by the time they hear this, they're going to be like, what, 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 what? And we'll be gone. <laughs> well, we're not going to be gone. No, but that'll give you some time to catch up or some time to spend your half hour a week doing something else. More, more productive. <laughs> <laughs> but we will be. Oh, and by the way, we, have, we do have some food exchanges that are in the air right now, mm -hmm. particularly with uh, Shelly from Shelly's podcast, Jen from the Dinky Cast. And also listener Janny from Canada. Any other communications or interactions we have going on will Oh, yeah. It, it's, it's, just, it's just we're not going to do any regular shows. Between now and January. Until January. Right. 
But and then you, we'll be back in full force and refreshed, energized. So anyway, so be sure to tune in next week because next week is going to be uh, a regular show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we beat that horse into the yeah, ground. Yeah, I think we've said that. But if people want to get a hold of us, Lisa, how would they do that? Well, they can email us. Really? Our email address is dish at cheapdateshow.com. Yeah. Or they can come to cheapdateshow.com, the website, Mm -hmm. and enter a comment. We've had some complaints, actually, about... um, We have that little verifier thing with comments where you have to type in the letters and numbers. Yeah. Sometimes you type in exactly what it says and it insists that you didn't. Mm Mm-hmm. Don't take it personally. Just email us. Yeah. And we've had people do that, so thank you for doing that. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. It's even done that to me, and I hate it. And there's a listener hotline, too. Yeah, you can uh, leave us a voicemail as... Hot sauce lover did <laughs> at two oh six two oh three date or what if I have a phone that if you have don't know the if you're not fluent in texting that's two oh six two oh three three two eight three okay thank you sweetie thank you okay. had a blast yeah we should do this again sometime okay maybe next week okay okay good night good night. ¿Qué pasó? ¿Qué pasó? Radio Bemba relató. This podcast is proudly listed at podcastpickle.com. Amazing. That's fantastic. What do you think? I think it stinks. Of course it stinks. But it's a start. We're cooking here. This is a stew, a gumbo, a jambalaya, if you will. We're just jamming.